Hi and welcome. I know I said the next tutorial released on this channel would be an example of building an ASP.NET Core web application using C Sharp and .NET 5. I envisage that this tutorial may take some time to complete, so I've decided to release a few shorter videos while the web development tutorial is under construction as it were. So this particular video demonstrates how we can overload the double equals operator. I have already demonstrated in a previous video how we are able to overload the plus operator in a tutorial that was part of the C-Sharp for Beginners course. A link to this video has been included below in the description. Overloading the double equals operator is a little bit more involved than overloading the plus operator. For content like this and much more, please consider subscribing and please ring the bell so that you'll be notified of future content. If at any point you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It will be greatly appreciated. So let's get into it. In this example, we are going to overload the double equals operator for a class used for the storage of data pertaining to an employee. So let's create an employee class. Let's create three properties for our employee class. Just a quick tip, you can type prop and then press the tab key twice and Visual Studio will automatically generate template code for the relevant property. So let's create an ID property as int, a first name property as string, and a last name property as string. Okay, so let's write the code to overload the double equals operator. Let's create a public static method that returns a Boolean value. It is important to note that the operator keyword and the double equals operator are included in the relevant method signature. We can then write our custom code for the relevant method, which will tell the compiler how to establish equality between two objects instantiated from this employee type. So let's say that when two employee objects are compared using the double equals operator from calling client code, that if the ID property values for each of the relevant employee objects are compared and are equal, this will mean that the relevant employee objects are equal. So when the ID properties of the relevant employee objects are equal, this method will return true. Conversely, false is returned when the ID properties of the relevant employee objects are not equal. You can see that there is a red squiggly line under the double equals in our method definition. This means the compiler is flagging an error because we are missing something. So it is important to note that when we overload the double equals operator, we also need to overload the exclamation mark equals operator. The compiler is complaining because we must overload the exclamation mark equals operator if we have overloaded the double equals operator in the relevant class. The exclamation mark equals operator of course represents the converse functionality of the functionality coded within the method that overloads the double equals operator. So let's duplicate the method that overloads the double equals operator and appropriately modify the code to represent the converse of the functionality implemented in the method that overloads the double equals operator. Okay, let's test the code. In our main method, let's create code to instantiate two employee objects. Now we should be able to compare our two employee objects within an if statement using the double equals operator like this. When we do this, the code that we implemented to overload the double equals operator should be run. So if the two employee objects are equal, let's output an appropriate message to the screen. Let's include an else statement and output an appropriate message when the relevant two employee objects are deemed as not equal. You can see that the data for each of our employee objects is identical. Let's run the code. Great, this is an expected result. So the operator overload functionality is working. We also need to make sure that the equals method that is part of the system.object root class from which all c -sharp types ultimately inherit is overridden in our employee class. 
This is so that the functionality we have coded to override the double equals operator and the code written to override the exclamation mark equals operator within our employee class is consistent with the functionality run when calling client code invokes an employee objects equals method to test the relevant employee objects equality against another employee object. Let's run the code. And a null reference exception is thrown. The null reference exception has been thrown because we are currently using the exclamation mark equals operator within the equals method override to compare an employee object to null. So as you can see, this is resulting in our method that we have created to overload the exclamation mark equals operator to be called. The second argument of this method has been passed a null value. We are not currently handling nulls for our arguments and a null reference exception is thrown. So firstly, let's get rid of the runtime casting operation that we are doing in the equals method. We will add code to handle nulls at the end of this tutorial. For now, let's write code and use generics to strongly type the equals method so that we can avoid the need for runtime casting. We can do this by making our employee class implement the I equitable generic interface and pass in the employee type as an argument to the relevant I equitable generic interface. So next, we need to implement code for the generic I equitable interfaces equals method. So let's do this. You can see that the parameter definition for the equals method is strongly typed as employee. This means we don't need to perform runtime casting against an argument defined as object, which can cause runtime errors to occur. and we no longer get the null reference exception. Great. So, the other method of the system.object class that we should override is the get hash code method. The significance of hash codes are beyond the scope of this tutorial and will be the subject of an upcoming tutorial. I have included links below in the description to content that can help you with your understanding of the significance of hash codes. So let's perform a quick test of our implementation of the equals method. Great. So let's say there is a requirement to include the employee's first name property in our custom equality functionality. So let's include a comparison of the relevant employee object's first name properties appropriately in our code. Let's test our code. Great. Let's say that we want the relevant first name property comparison code to be case insensitive. So to do this, we can pass in the string comparison.ordinalignoreCaseEnumListItem value 
into the relevant equals method's second parameter like this. Let's run the code. Great. Let's write code to include the same comparison functionality that we have implemented for the relevant employee object's first name properties for the relevant employee object's last name properties. Great. Lastly, let's ensure that nulls are handled appropriately. In calling client code, it is quite common for developers to include code to check if an object is null or not null, whatever the case may be, using either the double equals operator or the exclamation mark equals operator. At the moment, if the calling client code performs such operations on objects derived from our employee class, a null reference exception would be thrown. This is because we are currently not handling nulls. We could just write code to handle a null reference exception, but let's rather handle nulls through implementing appropriate code logic. Let's first implement the appropriate code for the method we have created to overload the double equals operator in our employee class. 
let's write code so that if both the relevant employee objects are null, true is returned. Let's write code that if one of the employee objects is null and the other employee object is not null, that false is returned. Then we need to handle nulls within the method that we have implemented to overload the exclamation mark equals operator in our employee class. This code simply implements the converse functionality of the relevant code that we have implemented for the method that overloads the double equals operator. Let's also ensure that we write code to appropriately handle nulls in the equals method. Great! So, we have used the object.reference equals method to handle nulls. We can implement cleaner code for this purpose. We can use the is operator instead. The ability to handle nulls using the is operator has been available since the release of c -sharp version 7. Notice that Visual Studio is hinting that there is a better way to handle nulls by displaying a dotted line under the reference equals method calls. So let's hover our mouse pointers over the relevant dotted lines and use the Visual Studio facility provided to us to appropriately modify our code. Excellent! I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. Please consider subscribing for more content like this and much more. And please ring the bell so that you'll be notified of future content. Please feel free to share this video with anyone you feel may benefit from its content. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, it'll be greatly appreciated. I really enjoy reading your comments, so please feel free to engage with me in the comments section. The code created in this tutorial is available on GitHub. A link to the relevant repository is available below in the description. Thank you and take care.